Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tracy. I'm excited to share with you guys the custom order I've been working on. It's finally done besides the swimsuit cover-up. My client really wanted a swimsuit and the garment district doesn't really have any swimwear fabric. Plus, I'm not a fan of buying textiles from any of those stores just because there's already so much textile waste. So I decided to go check out some thrift stores and see if I could use anything. For swimsuits, the fiber content is usually a combination of poly, spandex, nylon, and lycra. So I was just looking for a garment that was composed of fibers usually used for swimwear. I was very fortunate to find this workout jacket. So um, I actually already cut, cut it out for the swimsuit, so that's all done. But I just wanted to show you this was the a uh, jacket I used. I found it at Buffalo Exchange and it was actually only $10 because I went during the week so they had a sale and it was $10 and I was like this is actually really cute so maybe I can figure out a way to cut this so I can actually make the swimsuit and then like keep the rest of the jacket for myself so I cut a portion of the sleeves so I'm just gonna hem this later but and hem the bottom and the back was really cute so I wanted to keep this cross back and I was able to so I'm just gonna end up clean finishing the hems but it's a really cute jacket. I didn't want to waste the whole thing. I was able to make this bikini and it's partially crocheted and partially the fabric so the cups have the fabric and it's crocheted with these elastics. I purchase all of my elastics from Shindo just because they are very high quality and they have an infinite amount of colors so I thought this aqua and teal green were just so beautiful for the swimsuit. It is so cute. I'm so happy with the final product and I can't believe I actually was able to recreate this design. This isn't my design. Um, I'm gonna just give credit to Coco Loba so I will insert them here. They hand make their bikinis and um, I think I did a great job on recreating it. She was going to order from them because she's going on vacation but because of COVID, her bikini wouldn't have come in time so she wanted me to recreate it. She wanted me to make a matching cover up skirt for it. I crocheted a lace uh, trim to put at the top of the skirt. Um, I, I'm really excited to actually make this skirt so I can sew this on because I think it's going to look really cute. I went to Fab Scrap, the Midtown location, and they're a great nonprofit that saves dead stock fabric from the landfill. And like when I tell you guys, you can literally find any fabric you want there. I promise you can. great cover-up skirt and it's like almost sheer but it's more opaque as you can see and yeah so I'm gonna take you guys through the process of making the skirt and I will show you how to pattern it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you! To start making the skirt you're gonna need your basic measurements so just measure your waist, hip, and length. I start by taking my fabric and going in about two or three inches and slashing and tearing my fabric so I can start off with a right angle. On the selvage part of the fabric, I measure out my hip length, which is 34 inches, and I add an inch for seam allowance, and I slash and tear. So I get a perfect rectangle, and my fabric width is 45 inches, so I have a 35 by 45 inch rectangle. And I just want to repeat this for the back, so you have two rectangles. I take one rectangle and just fold it in half, so I'm matching both straight cranes up, and I pin everything down so it doesn't move. I 
Okay, it's time to mark the front waistline. So I drop an inch at the raw edge just so I can remove that selvage. And I continue marking one inch towards the middle of the fabric. At the fold, I drop down an inch and a quarter and mark. And I use my curved ruler to connect both ends as smooth as possible. And I cut the new waistline. At the raw edge, measure out your length. So my length was 38 inches, but you should add an inch for a seam allowance. And I also tried slashing and tearing this, but didn't work in that direction, so that was a no-go. Um, back to just folding it and just cutting it by hand. I marked where I wanted my hem to end and squared it off and used my rotary cutter to trim away. I set the front skirt aside and on the back piece, I also marked down one inch on the raw edge, but at the fold, I drop an inch and a half and I just draw in the new waistline as smoothly as possible. And I cut the new back waistline. I measure out the length at the raw edge again and just mark it. At the hem of the back piece, at the raw edge, I mark my length, but at the fold, I want to drop an inch below that. So I mark just so you have a slightly longer back hem. So it's going to be slightly slanted, but we're going to just curve the line smoothly. I cut the new hemline. I like to mark the front and the back of my fabric just so I don't get confused which piece is which. And I'm just matching up wrong sides together, so I'm just going to be French seaming one side seam. It just depends where you want your slit. After I pin down one side seam, I just take it to my sewing machine and stitch a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down. When sewing with silk fabrics, make sure you change your sewing machine needle to a 7010. It is just a finer needle for these fabrics. Make sure to press that seam flat, and next we're just going to trim that seam allowance down to an eighth of an inch. After trimming that seam allowance, you want to fold right sides together and just sandwich that seam in between both layers and pin that French seam all the way down. After pinning everything down, you just take it to your sewing machine and sew a quarter inch seam allowance and you have a really nice French seam. So on the inside, it's very clean and on the outside, it looks very professional. Now that we have sewn one side seam together, the other side seam is going to be left open because it's going to act like a slip when we tie it. So we have to hem the front and the back side. And I'm just doing a baby hem. So for the baby hem, you want to do a quarter inch stitch all the way down. And then you want to do a double fold and pin so you get a really nice clean edge. After pinning the front edge, I just take it to my sewing machine and just top stitch that down so as close as possible to that fold. And you get a really nice finish on this silk and it looks very professional. You want to repeat these exact steps to the back edge and the actual hem of the skirt. It's time to gather the waistline, so I'm just setting my machine to the longest stitch length and sewing a quarter inch. 
at the waistline and don't back tack when you start and finish. You want your ends to be free and then you want to do another row of stitching a quarter inch apart from the first row. Now for my favorite part, you want to pull on the back threads and then you can just see your fabric starts to gather and you want to pull all the way until you reach your waist measurement. So the waist measurement for my client is 28 inches, so I'm just gathering until I get 28 inches. After gathering to my desired waist measurement, I just like to baste my gathers down just so nothing moves when I take it to my sewing machine. So I'm just basting with a needle and thread. Next, I'm taking a trim that I made and pinning it on the waistline. And you can really use a stretch trim, a rigid lace, some ribbon, or you can make your own like I did, but you can really use anything for the waistline to personalize it. And I'm just pinning this down all the way and I'm just finding my midpoint so I can line it up to the side seam. And then I'm stretching the trim to the skirt so I can get it exactly to my waist measurement and just pinning it down. After pinning my trim down, I just take it to my sewing machine and do a small stitch right on the edge of that trim, right on that yarn line. After sewing on my trim, I just fold it back and overlock the waist raw edge. And you can just do this with your regular sewing machine, just make sure to trim off the little threads before you do the zigzag over the edge. I take this back to my regular sewing machine and you want to just do a zigzag stitch right on top so you can catch that waistline seam allowance in the back. It's best to match your thread to your trim so you don't see that zigzag stitch on the top of it. I wanted to crochet tassels onto the trim so I could actually tie it at the side and I just did two chains and then I attached tassels. I can link the tassel tutorial I followed down below. During this whole project, I was binging younger and oh my gosh, look, Hilary Duff was literally wearing a swimsuit with this crochet detail I just did, and I was so shocked. And this is what the cover-up skirt looks like. I ended up trimming the tassels so they had a really straight edge, and they look so cute. And it's really neat that you can wear this skirt two ways, so you can just have it straight and have a little bit of your leg exposed, or you can take the one end and do a double twist and then just tuck it in at the side and you get this really cool drape effect. I hope you guys can recreate this skirt and thank you so much for watching.